Hope everyone's doing well. In this video, we've got another recap of what is Season 1, Week 4, and the final week of ANZ HCS Pro League, and what a week it was. So, first things first, as always, we're going to go over the four invited teams and the four qualified teams, and these are a bit weird this week because last week, which I didn't recap, was a bit of a shenanigan. Immunity and Divine Mind both kind of got DQ'd, which threw everything into disarray and it resulted in the invited teams this week being BBR in first seed, Chiefs in second, Divine Mind in third and Death Raptor fans in fourth. Um, there's a couple roster changes here, namely we had Kluzi stepping in for Rice in Death Raptor fans, um, Divine Mind dropped, well Chiefs inherited slays because Prades is no longer playing as I understand which meant that Divine Mind dropped Dante and then they picked up Flex Reigns and Raided and BBR still consisting of Ads, Brattles, Benji and Juckle. Then we had our qualified teams that being Immunity, Malicious, Direwolves and Demons. Uh, Demons is the old 1620 Kings except they got rid of I believe uh, Bandit left their team they didn't drop him and they picked up Square instead. Um, Dire Wolves, same team as always with Dino, Boards, Vamped, and Zirkle. And Malicious, consisting of Ninjastix, Noble, Shrekman, and Zave. So these are, uh, I guess, invited teams and qualified teams in Australia. They don't really mean all that much right now because there's so much roster mania every single week. No one, like, it's just the outcome of these is so whack. Like, Chiefs not being first seed after winning back to back to back is just blows my mind doesn't really make sense but when you look at the way that they're doing it it kind of it kind of makes a little bit of sense but anyway it is what it is i guess and that's where we end up and it, it ruins the bracket uh partially which makes for less of a good viewing experience but can't do much about it hopefully we get some teams that want to solidify themselves and form long term not too far in the future Anyway, getting on with it. So our first game on broadcast was between Immunity and Death Raptor fans in the winners' quarterfinals, and our maps were Recharge, Oddball, Life Fire, Slayer, and Street Strongholds. And round one is a dominant performance out of Immunity, uh, managing to outslay Death Raptor fans 46 to 32 in the round, which allows them to spread out. However, they choose across the map and play a really controlled setup-based round, giving them the 100 to 21 win in the round and we saw a really nice triple which was almost an overkill out of voltage here to secure a camo early on which no doubt helped with this effort then death up the fans look like they're really going to struggle in round two as well after going down by 40 points early on um, and Ryu was really struggling to get anything going in terms of the kills department but Apollo showed us some signs of life with a couple of nice kills around Mangala and Top Elevator to get Death Raptor fans some much needed ball time and it turned out Apollo was the man with the plays that Death Raptor fan needed um, in this round after bringing the game to within two points with 10 seconds on the clock he then decides to make a ballsy play of baiting the ball for kills, which narrowly works out in their favor. And Death Raptor fans managed to escape with a, a, a slight lead here, 84 to 83, and win the round, um, taking us to a round three. Which ultimately, in this round three, it ultimately just came down to a super important kill that I think is going to haunt Voltage the rest of the week. And after being down, so the backstory of the round is... After being down 91 to 15, Immunity go on a huge run to bring the game to 97 to 75. Benno gets a triple kill around gold pipes and Voltage fails to secure what should have been an easy kill on Kluzi. He was distracted fighting Benno. So then Kluzi 180 reversals Voltage and goes on to pick up the final three seconds of the ball time for Death Raptor fans to win the map 2-1. And in that situation there, Voltage won that fight, which he definitely should have, and Death Raptor fans are then four dead spawning across the map. Um, Immunity's holding the ball in gold. They have full map control and they can essentially do what they did in round one and they should definitely be able to win that game from there, but they end up losing um, all on the back of a choked kill. Still... Immunity out Slade in this map, 145 to 126 overall to lose. Uh, Benno dropped 12k damage, went 46 for 32, and Apollo was the main slayer on the side of Death Raptor fans, only going positive too. Everyone else on his team went negative. In game two, Life Fire Slayer, what was a close ordeal, which was almost tied at 37 to 35 in Death Raptor fans' favor, turned into a comfortable win for Team Immunity after Ryu makes a bit of a judgment error. Um, he secures the snipe, 
um, when it's 37 to 35, and instead of running back and positioning himself and playing off of his team and trying to get snipes, he tries to do a bit too much and runs the snipe down to the camo which is coming up, essentially gifts the snipe to immunity, um, does not a lot of damage to camo, so they get a camo and they get a sniper, they get the numbers advantage, and a team like immunity, they put this to good use and eventually they close the game out 50 to 45. Benno here, again, with 14 kills, 10 assists, and eight deaths, a massive game out of him being involved in 24 kills. He was proving to be a monster for the immunity squad. We went into game three, which is a streak stronghold, and I think Ryu made up for his poorly judged play on Life Fire strongholds with a dirty triple kill around B stairs, followed up by another kill shortly after to allow Death Rap Defense to extend an early 155 to 24 point lead. And immunity try their hand at a comeback, but even securing a triple cap and rockets, but only managed to get to 152 points in the end, and Death Raptor fans took the win and advanced to the winner's semis to play against Demons. Moving on to the winner's semis, we had Demons taking on Death Raptor fans in game one was Aquarius Flag, and I thought it was a good map to see um, these two teams verse against because they're two relatively new teams and you're competing on a relatively even map. You don't need too many strategies because it's a symmetrical map. And it's a neck and neck game the whole way through. We saw big plays out of Kluzy to secure the return in what was an early flag standoff to put Death Raptor fans up 1-0. But flags were continually traded one for one in this game in really what was a story of two giants in Kluzy for the side of Death Raptor fans and Venom on the side of Demons jousting it out to see who could be King Slayer in the lobby. Ultimately, the crown went to Venom, who went 31 for 17 overall and secured Demons a 3-2 win in the end in what was a very exciting first match. And then game two, what was looking to be a standard game of Bizarre Slayer with both teams trading out for most of the game. Death Raptor fans are up 46 to 43, but go numbers down, which allows Plasma to pick up the overshield, threatening the comeback for Demons. Kluzy, though, makes the play, hides on the plasma pistol inside of his house and gets the back smack on Overshield, which, as it turns out, was not enough to shut down the momentum of Demons, who decide to stack rockets and bottom mid whilst down 49 to 47 and capitalize on the desperation of Death Raptor fans to get the last kill. And uh, they bait and switch perfectly all the way to a 49-49 situation. Then Apollo gets caught running with his pants down, one shot across blue balcony from a nade that sways chucks from bottom rockets and who casually plays a bit of SWAT across the map and nets that final kill on Apollo to win 50 to 49 in a big, a big reversal comeback to take the series 2-0 Demon's Way and move on to the winner's finals. Next we saw on broadcast was Divine Mind vs BBR and I really don't have too much to say here. Game 1 was a live fire strongholds and Divine Mind were just way too strong and took the game 250 to 106. Um, even with Raided's little team nade spree, he had two plasma grenades, he chucks it in two different areas and kills two teammates, which he uh, then went on to, I guess, rectify with a 20 to 9 overall performance and give Divine Mind that win. Um, everyone on the side of BBR here went quite negative, and then Divine Mind advanced to win the recharge slayer 50 to 41. So in the winners' finals, we had a matchup that we've never seen before, that being Chiefs taking on Demons. Game one was Recharge Strongholds, and this is a map that we've seen Chiefs in the past um, really run rampant on. I believe it was in the final week of the Raleigh qualifier that they beat Dire Wolves, who in in the grand finals, um, something like 250 to 30. So I was expecting something similar coming into this game, given the inexperience of Demons, but Demons clearly know a thing or two about Recharge, and uh, it was neck and neck for most of the game, with both teams having their fair share of really high quality individual plays. Um, some that I wanted to point out, we had Lollies get a sword double kill, including one on the camo, followed shortly by a third kill around tower. We had some really nice camo mangler plays from Pips, who went absolutely massive on a huge run of kills to bring Chiefs back into control and close the gap Demons made early on, putting Demons on a triple cap at 142 to 140. And then we had, with the game on the line and Chiefs running around like mad men trying to contest the B stronghold, Plasma pulling out what was such a composed double kill on Pip and Madzi, um, which I just thought was absolutely disgusting. You do not do that to Pip and Madzi, but Plasma out here trying to show that 
He's a new gun on the block and he wants to be taken seriously. This was, I thought, the most one of the best plays that I saw um, in this competition on that week. So then at 245 to 241, with Demons needing five points and Chiefs needing nine to take the win, Lollies picks up a kill on barcode with the camo, kills Pip in C, and then kills barcode again on respawn to single-handedly cap C and put Chiefs three dead all for Chiefs to get a god spawn in A and somehow manage to close the game out 250 to 248. Regardless, Demons definitely showed some serious potential in this map, especially Lollies and Plasma, who had the tempo of the map down pat, being aggressive early on to keep pushing their advantages and rotating on Chiefs, and it was looking to be the start of what was a really good series. So we had game two was a street slayer. Sways goes straight into this game and immediately puts Chiefs 4 dead with an overkill on the rip to give Demons a 4-0 advantage at the start of the game. Uh, full map and full weapon control, but this is where Chiefs really set themselves apart from the rest of the pack who quickly break out of what should have been full map control and go on to do their usual thing and win the map 50-35 to with Slays on uh, the side of Chiefs going 15-8 to for a positive 7 overall. Demons do their best in map 3 on Aquarius Flag, but Chiefs are way too powerful and win it in a 5-0 fashion. Barcode was instrumental in this win with his camouflage control when Chiefs are running flags, allowing him to control the map through top mid positioning and get aggressive when needed, which made for an easy third and fourth flag cap, really putting the nail in the coffin of Demons. So just like that, Chiefs advance to the grand finals with a 3-0 onto Demons, putting them down to the losers finals where they had to verse Divine Mind and these were some of the best games that we saw, I think, all night. I'm not going to go over them because um, I don't want to give too much spotlight to the Demons. I, you can tell I am now partial to them. Uh, Demons, yeah, lose this 3-0. Our first map was Bizarre Flag, which they lost 2-1. They lost Live Fire Slayer, 50-48. to And they also lost Streets of Ball, 2-0. But as you can see, some really close scores and... Everything was within a bee's dick from taking the win. Um, even the old ball rounds were super close, within 10 to 20 points every round. Obviously, the Slayer was within two, and the Flag was within one. So this easily could we, you know, we could have been singing a different song here if they managed to clutch up. But unfortunately, it looks like that's something that the Demons boys are going to have to work on. I've got the Team Demons statistics, um, obviously being knocked out in third, which is an honorable performance. Sways having 184 kills, the highest on his team. Square, unfortunately, with the most deaths and going neg 68 overall. But it was Venom Plasma, um, who I said was incredibly impressive with the 1.17 KD overall, which is actually tied with the second highest KD um, in the whole tournament that took place. Um, I think behind Barcode, who was first, and I can't remember who was second, but considering they took on Chiefs and Divine Mind, to keep a 1.17 KD is very impressive. So we had our grand finals, which was the usual matchup of Chiefs taking on Divine Mind, and the maps that we had were Aquarius Flag, Bizarre Slayer, Recharge Eyeball, Life Fire Strongholds, and Street Slayer. Divine Mind come out the gates looking like the favourites to take this map one as they go up 2-0 early on and are clearly the dominant team with constant pressure on Chief's base. Pips, however, plays the role of a sneaky spoiler and makes some unexpected P-side flanks at different points throughout the game which stop Divine Mind from capitalising on a number of situations they have the advantage in, including in the last play of the game which allows Chiefs to tie the game up 2-2 in standard overtime and brings us to an extended overtime where Chiefs kill the entire Divine Mind roster and get a flag all the way to their utility. But Beaston gets a massive double kill in a return, allowing Divine Mind to run and capture their own flag and win the game 3-2 in overtime. Everyone on Divine Mind went positive here, and Barcode had what I think was his very first negative game in a grand finals, going 28 for 30 overall. Uh, Bizarre Slayer was kind of a little bit of a blowout. Chiefs start the game off 9-1, and one, and then they extend that to 21-4. to four. And uh, Divine, do their, Divine Mind do their best to bring it back, but they ultimately lose 50-35, to 35, and it was Barcode making up for his poor, poor performance in Game 1, going 17 kills, 4 assists, and 7 deaths in this Game 2. Uh, game 3 was recharge oddball, and Divine Mind, I think, really need to work on their oddball as a team, as it seemed like they were giving up Quite a few, um, what I would call, undisciplined deaths trying to go for a ball with no real control. And uh, they lose round 1, 60 to 49. 
Round two was a complete whitewash. The Chiefs do a really good job at holding the ball in an elevator setup, and they get another round of four dead with Madzi using the sword to bait tower, and then there was no real coming back for Divine Mine, and they got slaughtered 100-0 in round two to lose this map 2-0. And Chiefs close out the series here on Live Fire Strongholds Game 4. Um, off of the back of what is probably the best performance we've seen in ANZ so far in a grand finals. And you guessed it, that's Barcode. Going 21 kills for 3 deaths. Um, starting the game off at 13-0 with a killing frenzy and just hitting an exuberant amount of ridiculous snipes. He was no scoping and jiggle peeking, hitting everything and anything that he wanted to without a care in the world and Divine Mind just didn't stand a chance here and lose 250 to 44 and go down 3-1 overall. The final placings for the week, Chiefs taking first on their four-peat on the season, uh, haven't lost a tournament yet. Divine Mind taking their usual second. Demons in third. Dire Wolves fourth. BBR and Death Raptor fans fifth, sixth. Immunity and Malicious seven, eight. So that's season one of the Pro League all done. I don't believe that there is any Pro League coming up for the next couple of weeks. I think the next two weeks we only have open series, which are held on Sundays. And then I think there's one or two Super Cups the week after that. So I'm not sure what I'll be doing in terms of content and recaps. May not be any videos until the Pro League returns. But you know for sure, once it's back, I will be back. So until then, thanks for watching. Keep putting your best foot forward. Peace out.